Here we are again in the book of Daniel. Daniel was of the captive of Judah. Wonderful book, wonderful book. Can't understand it all. There's a lot of stuff that's easily be understood. But there's a lot that you can't understand. And it'll be revealed in his time. So he talked about in Daniel chapter 3 about Sedrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They would not bend, they would not bow, and they would not burn right there. But they was put through the test. So he says, Nebuchadnezzar the king made an image of gold whose height was three score cubits and the breadth thereof six cubits. He set it up in the plains of Dura in the province of Babylon right there. I believe he made this image because of the dream that God gave him and the Lord tried to make himself known to uh, King Nebuchadnezzar right here. And in this case, he tried to make himself known to him. And in Daniel's days, he tried to make himself known to him right there. And, and Daniel helped promote these three, Sedrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Somebody says, well, where was Daniel at? I don't know. Maybe he was on the king's business. But I know if he would have been there, he wouldn't have bowed down to this thing either. Because Daniel... He didn't bow down to things like that. And he was a praying man. He loved the Lord. And he was willing to die for God. And he even put his life in jeopardy because he wouldn't eat the king's meat right there. So he says that he made this golden image right there and wanted everybody to fall down to it. Now God gave him a dream about that. And you know, I noticed that God told Moses to set up a golden image serpent on a pole and look to that pole whenever you got bit by the serpents and God would heal that person. They wouldn't die. They looked by faith. And he mentioned that in the book of John chapter 3 but he also mentions that in I think 2 Kings that a king come by and tore that golden serpent down that Moses put up now. They sat there and began to worship that thing and burn incense to that abuse God's word. Well, I believe Nebuchadnezzar did the same exact thing right here. He misinterpreted God's word. <clears throat> so we have to watch out. Like Paul said, we're not of them that corrupt the word of the Lord. We're not of them that corrupt the word of, the, of God. There's too many people corrupting God's word, misplacing God's word, telling lies about God's word and stretching the truth and bending the truth and making it say something that it really don't say right there. So you have to watch out for that type of stuff. But God got the glory out of this. Even though the devil raised up and, you know, was in a rage, God still got the glory. And, he, and his people prospered. Every time the devil raised up, when they obeyed God and trusted in God, no matter if they had to lose their life, God always promoted them and blessed them. They always come out as a vessel for the finer right there. So let's look at this. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king sent together all his governors, his judges, his sheriffs, his people, all these leaders and, and want them to bow down to this, dedicate this thing and bow down to it at the sound of the trumpet, the flute, the, the different instruments, all kinds of music. He wanted them to bow down to this thing right here. He still had pride in him. He wasn't saved yet. I believe he got saved in chapter 4 and he gives this testimony when he realized that God was the ruler of the universe. When God did all this and how God raised him up. Well, at first he was saying, I did this. I made this. I did this right here. And God took the I out of him and he finally brought forth the God of heaven and said, hey, you're the one that made it all. When he realized God was the one that did this, and I believe he got saved. I really do. At first, he called them gods, but then when he got saved, he said, the God of heaven, right there. So he says, verse 3, no, verse, let's drop down to verse 5. That it? That what time ye hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, different kinds of, all kinds of music, you fall down and worship the golden image and that Nebuchadnezzar the king has set up. 
Now, the king ain't really saw real Bible-believing faith. He's fixing to see it right here. He says, And whoso falleth down, not down, and worship shall the same hour be cast into the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. Right there. And the children of God didn't want to go through this furnace, but they was willing to die for the Lord. And you need to have more of that faith right there where you're willing to sacrifice for God. And most of his people are not willing to sacrifice. Most of his people can't even hardly pick up his Bible. Most of his people can't pray to him. You know, they're so wishy-washy, up one day, down the next, up one day, down the next, never obeying God. They only use God when they he's convenient to them or something happened. All, all of a sudden, they're a prayer warrior. You know what I'm saying? you got to do this consistently on a daily basis. You need to serve the Lord. So he says in verse 8, Wherefore, at that time, certain Chaldeans came near and accused the Jews. Notice that. There's always people that's going to be jealous against God's people. And they want to be tattletales. They want to get them in trouble. They want them to look bad. You know what I mean? Because God always prospers his children. And people get jealous of that type of stuff. And there's always somebody lying in wait right there to try to disturb us, to tell on us, to get us in trouble to destroy us if they could. You know what I'm saying? So he said, they to accuse the Jews. They spake and said to the king Nebuchadnezzar, O oh, king, live forever. And that's how most they did in that day. They flattered the king. They feared the king because he had power to, to take you down if he wanted to. At his little finger, he can take you down. He said, Thou, O oh, king, has made a degree that every man that shall hear the sound of the, the sound of the Cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, solitary, and dual clint, slimer, and all kinds of music shall fall down and worship the golden image. And whoso falleth not down and worshipeth, that he should be cast in the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. Right there. There are certain Jews whom thou hast set over the affairs of the province of Babylon. They was probably jealous of that. No doubt they was jealous of Daniel. And we see that also later on. They was jealous of Daniel. And they was jealous of these fellows. And they just loved to get somebody in trouble right there. They would love to burn them. But they, they, they would not burn and they would not bow. They brought glory to the God of heaven. It said, There are certain Jews whom thou hast set over the affairs of the province of Babylon... Sadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, these men, O king, have not regarded thee. They serve not thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Now, I believe the king liked these fellers. He gave them another chance right here. See what he says. Then Nebuchadnezzar, in his rage and fury, commanded them to bring Sadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Then they brought these men before the king. Nebuchadnezzar spake and said unto them, it is, is, it, is it true, O Sadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, do not ye serve my go gods, nor worship the golden image which I have set up? Notice that. That's his mercy right there. Now, if ye be ready, that at what time ye hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, solitary, thou slimer, and all kinds of music, Ye fall down and worship the image which I have made. Well, but if ye worship not, ye shall be cast the same hour into the midst of the burning, fiery furnace. And who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hand? I tell you, he should have took heed of Daniel. And I believe he did at the time. God dealt with him at that time. But how quickly you forget the Lord. You know what I mean? The hand of God did a miracle in front of him, but how quickly he took God's dream and tried to make this image of gold right here. And he says, Sedrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. If it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us. They knew God 
could deliver them. No matter what the king says, they knew that. Look what, they, what he says. From the burning, fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. He says, but if not, if he don't do this, we're still going to serve him. We're still going to serve God. That's the attitude that all Christians need. If God don't deliver us, we're still going to serve Him right there. Because we're, we're to receive evil at the hand of God much as well as good. That's what Job said. We can't just suspect God just to spoil us rotten, which He does spoil us. He gives us more abundantly above that we ask or say. He takes care of His people. And guess what? When we die... We're going on to glory. We ain't going to have no more problems. There's many mansions in my Father's house. We're going to be blessed. He's going to give us the crown of life. He's going to give us different crowns. He's going to bless us. We're going to walk on streets of gold. I mean, we're going to go through the pearly gates. We're going to go before the throne of God. We're going to drink out of the, the clear, uh, sea of clear as crystal, like glass right there. We're going to eat of the fruit of the tree for the healings of the nations a tree of life. We're going to spend eternity. There's, there's probably going to be beautiful things everywhere for miles right there. It's going to be wonderful. The devil ain't going to be there. Sin ain't going to be there. Problems ain't going to be there. We got it made. <laughs> the best is yet to come. You better believe it. <laughs> He's letting us go through this life. He's letting us go through this life. But one day it'll all be over. Our bodies will go back to the dust. Our soul we're going to be with the Lord. To be absent from the body is to be present with God. Thank God for that right there. And they knew that. That's sort of what they were saying right there. If he don't, we're still going to serve him. And he says, but if not, be it known unto thee, O king. And it, they, did, they didn't hesitate. They wasn't afraid to say. They wasn't careful to say this. That if we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Now, I want you to think about this. All his leaders were there. All eyes were on Nebuchadnezzar, this golden image, and Cedric, Meshach, and Abednego. Think about this. I want you to really think about this. All eyes were on them. And these three soldiers of the Lord we're fixing to glorify God and show the world the true and the living God because this man was the ruler of the world at this time. And they're fixing to change the king's word right there. I believe precious souls got saved after this. Somebody said, well, the, God, the Lord didn't used to save Gentiles. Let me tell you, this is a Gentile nation right here. He's facing to save somebody. Nebuchadnezzar was, I mean, uh, uh, Jonah went and preached to Nineveh. Those were Gentiles right there. They got saved. God cares for everybody. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. That's for everybody from every nation unto heaven. He wants us to get out there in the highways and byways. And preach the gospel to help them get in. Get off your lazy fanny and go to work right there for the Lord. You know what I'm saying? Go to work for the Lord. Do something for God. Get the word out with the demonstration of the Holy Ghost. It's plain and simple as that. Go to work for the Lord. These men were faithful. Nebuchadnezzar saw these men being faithful all them years right there working for him. I believe he really liked these fellers, but he was sort of made a fool of right there in front of all his people. And he was in a rage and he was wanting to show them, hey, these three little weasels ain't going to, you know, make me look bad. <clears throat> so he says, then was Nebuchadnezzar full of fury. That was the devil getting strong to him. Sometimes when the devil gets his strongest, that means God's facing to do something. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? America's going to get so bad one day. Their sins are going to come to the full. And finally, God's going to have to deal with America. He's merciful to us because there's still children of the Lord left. But America's a Christian nation? Wait a minute. I beg your pardon. 
Uh uh-uh. uh. No more. They used to. They had Christian principles, built our Constitution with prayer and the basis of the law. <clears throat> but anymore? No, not as a whole. We're not a Christian nation anymore as a whole. We're barely hanging on to this right here. And when our sins in America come to a full, God's going to deal with us. You better believe it. He said that the sins of the Amorites are not yet full. When they get full in the fourth generation, I'm going to deal with them. That's what he told Abraham in the book of Genesis, chapter 15. Same thing's going to happen to America. Same thing's going to happen to every nation that keeps on and keeps on and gets worse and worse. God's finally going to have to do something right there. He's ever merciful. He's long suffering, but he don't allow it to keep going. He didn't allow it in the Roman Empire. He didn't allow it in this, this empire. Finally got destroyed. The Medes and the Persians finally got destroyed. Think about it. Alexander the Great and all them finally got destroyed. God's not going to keep putting up with foolishness. God's spirit will not always strive with man. God will take care of sin. You better believe it. And it ain't going to be pretty when God comes on the scene. But this is the mercy of the Lord. God used this to get His glory known all over the earth. Right here. Millions of people saw this. People whispered and said, Look, God changed the king's word and they passed it on the other nations. Just like with Rahab the harlot. She said, We heard what y'all did. What God did to Egypt, that great nation. We seen the hand of the Lord. We heard about it. They spread it all over right there. It ought to give you cold chills, I tell you, thinking about it right there. <clears throat> so he says, Then was Nebuchadnezzar full of fury, and the form of his vices were changed against Sedrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Therefore he spake and commanded that they should heat the furnace one seven times more than it was wont to be heated. Right there. I believe that he had a set degree for that thing, but he was so mad he turned it up so high more than it should have been or it could have been. He says, And he commanded the most mighty men that were in his army to bind Cedric, Meshach, and Abednego. Boy, he's going to make a perfect example out of them. You don't do that to the king's word and to cast them into the burning fire furnace. Then these men were bound in their coats, and their hosens, and their hats, and their other garments, and were cast into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. He was bound up, and they got thrown in there, all three of them. Therefore, because the king's commandment was so urgent, and the furnace exceeding hot, the flame of the fire slew those men that took up Sedrach, Meshach, and Abednego. That represents sinners. That represents sinners going to hell right there. They will burn in the fire. God's people's not going to burn in the fire right there. They're not going to burn in that fire. But the sinners will burn in the hell. Hell's in the heart of the earth right now. I don't care what no preacher says. I don't care what no uh, history book or encyclopedia or whatever. This Bible says hell is a place of torment. He gives us a demonstration in the book. The devil would like to shut that up. You know what I'm saying? Hell's a real place. People are going to burn. People are burning down there now. But one day hell's going to be delivered up. It's going to be judged. Then it's going to be cast into the lake of fire, which is the second death. I believe that first death, that's the first death. But then, right when he casts them into the lake of fire, that's the second. We believe it's the sun, but it could be something else, some God's got. I believe we see it every day. We just have thoughts about that. I don't know, but it could be that sun right there that we see every day. We've corrupted everything we've ever looked at. You think about that. <clears throat> he said, those things that we now see is going to perish and pass away. Why? Because mankind has corrupted it right there, has corrupted it. 
So he says in verse 22, Therefore, because the king's commandment was urgent and the furnace exceeding hot, the flame of the fire slew those men that took up Sedrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these three men, Sedrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down bound in the midst of, of the burning fiery flames right there in the furnace. They was bound and they fell down, the Bible says. Then Nebuchadnezzar, the king, was astonished. I believe he heard about Jesus. He didn't hear about Jesus' name, but he heard about the Messiah coming one day. I believe that. He heard all kinds of wisdom. Daniel might have told him about uh, the Messiah coming. You never know. This king was had in contact with the Jewish people, and he listened to the Jewish people also for counsel. It says, Then Nebuchadnezzar, the king, was astonished, and rose up in haste, and spake, and said unto the uh, counselors, did not we cast three men bound in the midst of the fire? They answered and said unto the king, True, O king. He's making himself known to Nebuchadnezzar right here. He answered and said, Lo, I see four men loosed, walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt. And the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. Right there. I believe that he knew about the Son of God. Didn't know his name, but he knew about the Son of God coming one day. Like Moses talked about, I think it's in uh, Deuteronomy chapter 18, that great prophet that shall come. And he says, Then Nebuchadnezzar came near to the mouth of the burning fiery furnace and spake and said, Sedrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High God. Notice that right there. Servants of the Most High God. He started talking right then. He started seeing a little bit clearer then. Changed the king's word. This was so amazing to him, he let down his pride right there, right then and there. God made himself known to him. He didn't get saved right here. This is God dealing with his heart. This is God dealing with all his leaders. This is God dealing with all the nations of the earth around that area at that time. God's making himself known to everybody through this uh, false worship right here. God will get glory out of our lives one way or the other. He says, And the princes, governors, and captains, and the king, count, king counselors being gathered together saw these men upon whose bodies the fire had no power, nor the hair and hair of their head. Heads was seen.